Hello there, welcome back to Becker's Models, Chris here. I want to show you in this video uh, how I go over and tackle uh, two types of Corsair painting. And this is a finished paint mule, the Academy Corsair that was used for this process. So what I'm going to do in this video, and it will, might be a long one, so I apologise up front. I'll put links in the description below so you can shuffle back and forth to what's relevant to you. Uh, I'm going to go over all the paint mixes and choices I've made along here and why I've gone for these and explain some reasons why some of the kit uh, references and the kit uh, recommendations may not be correct if you're going for even just a brand new factory finish sort of look. So grab a nice cup of coffee or something a bit stronger because this will get a bit academic and a bit technical with colours and federal standard numbers and so forth and let's get to it. I've decided for my double Corsair build, the Tamiya kits, that I want to do uh, basically a generic or a stereotypical uh, kit, not a specific aircraft like Tojo Eats SH-1T or Viva or one of the, the very married, uh, varied uh, 1A Corsairs. I want to do this because I want to practice elements of all of the, the weathering and painting techniques uh, across uh, the Corsairs. I mean, you know, they're extremely faded and used in the South Pacific. So that means we need to talk about historical paint. So it's, it's helpful to understand both schemes and I'll have to go over each carefully. The first scheme, so we're talking pre-1942, I think that's the benchmark, uh, which two tones. It was just the upper blue and lower grey. It was actually called M485, which was used on, the, on almost all the birdcage Corsairs. And that had the blue-grey ANA603 at the top and the lower was a light grey. Now mid-war, uh, po post-1942, they switched to three-tone or tritone, and that had a similar sort of um, middle intermediate blue, but they added a non-spectacular matte and a glossy sea blue, a much darker one on top, an intermediate blue in the middle, and then the lower was actually a cooler insignia white. Now, how do we match those historical colours to modern um, model paint colours that all the manufacturers have come up with. Now a lot of metal, a lot of model kits and paint manufacturers, they give quite mixed messages about this and this is what I want to clear up in this video. So even before getting into the faded and weathering um, that does happen to all these Corsairs, the so-called factory finishes aren't quite right. Let's start, dive deep into it and I want you to remember a warning first. Colour is not exact. Um, <laughs> your monitor, your device makes colour look different, your eyes makes colour look different, we all perceive colour in a different way and also you can't trust old um, colour footage. Uh, you can't even trust the black and white footage either. You just have, you have, it's more of a guesstimate, it's more of a, it's more of an art than a science. So whilst I do say, oh, it was this colour, I'm actually saying it's somewhat like this colour. So just don't flame me in the comments below. So in terms of what paint and kit manufacturers try to get close to, they most of them use the federal standard or FS um, method, which is you know it's a five-figure, five-letter uh, standard as part of the paint mixing processes. And starting with the birdcage colours, what the main recommendations of most kits is they tell you to do something like three five one eighty nine for the blue, and three six four four zero for the light grey. Unfortunately, what you get is a very desaturated, really faded out blue and a nearly yellow grey. Now I want you to compare that to the colour photo of a new factory Corsair. You can notice here that the blue is far richer, except on the fabric parts on the wing, we'll get to that later, while the light grey underneath has got almost no yellow hue to it. So what's going on? Here's some more evidence. This particular birdcage has more obviously faded wings, but the fuselage colours still look quite rich and unfaded along the vertical at least, while the light grey again, you can't see any yellow. Now it might be the film stock that they're using, the, the, the photo stock, but these colours don't look like what the paint recommendations are saying. Now I would suggest if you have a look at the screen cap here of uh, these other uh, two colours, that 35177 blue, which has more saturation, it's richer, it's got a nicer colour, and perhaps 27875 as a white, which has a lot less yellow in it, are closer but not perfect representation of what those historical out of the factory door base colours would be. When it comes to those tritone mid-war colours, the, the call outs suggest uh, 17875 or ANA 601, that's the Army Navy Aeronautical Scheme, 601 Insignia White, 
the 35164 for the blue, intermediate blue, 608, and 35052 for the C blue, the 607. Now I want you to compare that color swatch to some almost brand new clean finishes of Tritone on these beautiful pictures of Hell Divers and Hellcats. I couldn't find a clean Corsair uh, color photo. I've got a couple of black and white ones, but we've got to, we've got to compare like for like here. Now the Insignia White for mine has, has, you know, when you compare it to these, it's got a little bit too much ivory, but it's close. The 608 Intermediate Blue is supposedly, you know, this 35164, but again, that's way too gray in value, and then the colors are much more vibrant. While the C Blue is actually fairly close, uh, the 35042, possibly a bit richer, but they're almost on the money with that one. Now showing you the, uh, the colors I think are closer, I would suggest that 35045 is a little bit richer. You could swap it with the 042, doesn't really matter. Um, for the C blue, and we'll, I'll get to that in a minute. The 35177 makes more sense for that intermediate blue. It's a much brighter color. Uh, it's not as desaturated. And then using 37925, which is a little bit more white, not as cool, um, for the Insignia white. So how do we paint these basic colors, the base colors? Well, I'm going to show you because uh, although there are some paints uh, out there that straight out of the bottle might work for you, there might be the perfect matches, I prefer to use the MRP and Tamiya lacquer paints. And so that's what I'm working with for my projects, and hopefully that can help you. I like them because they're very easy to control in terms of getting a real fine uh, spray, doing a lot of mottling, do a lot of fading and so forth. They're also very easy to chip because coarse hairs are known for having very worn uh, airframes and their durability when, they, when you're finished, so you can do a lot of heavy weathering. So what I've done here is I've made a, a major palette card here, okay, and I've done a lot of swatches here and I, with real paint, so I want to show you what, what, I'm, uh, what I'm getting at. So starting with the recommended birdcage colors up here in this corner, these two, 35189, 36440, uh, you can see that I've used a Tamiya, this is the main recommendation you see in most of the kits, they say just go one for one medium blue with white. And yeah, it's it's a it's a really um, you know way too desaturated and faded you know factory finish. If you paint your whole model like that, it just doesn't look right. It looks like it's it's actually been out in the sun for two years when in fact the original paint was far richer than that. The uh, the MRP ninety eight, which I've used straight out of the bottle for the three six four four O, the the gold grey is you know it's got far too much yellow in it. Okay, now uh, the corrected color I used instead is over here. These two. Okay, so this is an MRP mix, but you can also, I'll show you later how you can use a Tamiya mix as well. So this is MRP 136, but diluted with a little bit of white. And the, the MRP 98, again, I've just diluted that with a little bit of the Insignia white, actually. And that just takes, knocks back the yellow hue just that little bit. So if you're looking for a factory finish, I would recommend, if you just want to use MRP straight out of the bottle, use those two there. Moving to the Tritone for the 1As, uh, the straight MRP colors are quite interesting. They seem to be very close out of the bottle. You know, MRP are good for that. They, they do match to the FS, the federal standard numbers quite well. So we've got the MRP 14 for the straight C blue, very dark, very rich. Uh, the 136 for the intermediate blue and the 135 for the insignia white. Now, I, I think this is a little bit too rich, although you can use it on certain panels and I'll explain it later that on some Corsairs, you can see a very rich color uh, particularly on the vertical surfaces. The intermediate blue is a match, a direct match for the 35164. They've got that on the money, but I think that's too desaturated. Um, it's just a little bit too gray, a little bit too dull. And the insignia white's very cool. Okay, it does match to 17875, but it is, it's a very cold sort of color. That can be changed if you paint it over something like a brown uh, or something like that, or you can just mix it up a little bit. Now, I've adjusted them slightly. I'll move the palette to the to the right there and you can see that this one automatically is way lighter than that that's actually an intermediate color because the sea blue does fade very quickly so this one is just mrp 14 with a little bit of four added if you just put um, i did one blend in here you can almost just see there which is just a bare amount of, of white this is a, a variable color you don't need to get this exactly right you can just lower the richness a little bit uh, the 35177, I've used a Tamiya mix there, which I'll explain in a minute. And then the Cool Insignia White, I just added uh, a little bit of the straight white just to just to knock back that coolness, to make it as, as cold. So that's straight over a grey primer and it looks just right. But here's the problem with Corsair. <laughs> 
all of these paints faded and weathered very quickly in the South Pacific. I've been there, trust me. I've, <laughs> I've been to one of these bases where they were on holidays and oh my God, it's so hot. There's, you know, it's constant heat, lots of torrential rain and of course the abrasion they had from their crushed coral runways, let alone all the use and abuse, wartime conditions, refueling, muddy feet, you know, greasy hands pushing airframes around. These paints did not last long in those conditions. Now, this is not debatable, <laughs> I'm sorry. It shows in every single reference photo, there's absolutely no denying it. Uh, there's plenty of them, including many black and white photos of very high quality, where you can discern color shifts, color value changes very easy. So what this means is as modelers, we have to come up with not just those two or three base colors, but several values of each color to represent mainly the fading, but also the heavy weathering, like the staining, and also across different surfaces across the aircraft. Uh, you know, there's aluminium here in the, for most of it, but there's also uh, fabric okay, on the wings and, and elsewhere. So what I've done is I've based uh, my corrected base colors and then using value scales I've guesstimated from the different uh, values of those base colors that changed over the airframe. And then I've tried to match them to the closest I could get to a selection of federal standard blues to give you a basis to, you know, go, go on yourself using, using a color generator where I then finally matched as best I could with a combination of MRP and Tamiya paints. So here are the swatches I've come up with. I'll, I'll go through them carefully. So for the birdcage, uh, for, the, for the early scheme, just talking about the blues, we've got the 35177, okay, which is basically a base paint which, is, which used for, was used for touch-ups. You can see that also on the non-faded vertical sections of the fuselage. And then going down to slightly desaturated 35190 for the fading of the major panels on the wings. So that's the main color you'll see across the aircraft. And then moving to a much lighter blue, 35450. And now we're talking about things like uh, the fabric sections, the elevators, the rudder. And then uh, an even lighter, and you can go even further than that if you really want to push it. And that's 35488, which is for major bleaching. You know, the, on the rudder post on some Corsairs, for example, you see that quite, it just stands out. Now moving across to the 1A, to the tritone, again, as I said, you've got the, you can switch in between the 35042, and there's a little intermediate there for the 045, um, and sorry, on the, on the right here, the 045, I don't know if you can see the number on that, it's quite dark. Okay, so these are the sea blue base coats, the gloss and matte uh, you can use for the, the touch-ups, I do touch-ups under the wing, it really stark, it really stands out, the lower fuselage, and also blend and mottling in the 35042, uh, sorry, the A45, for a majority of the faded areas, you'll see like the inner wings, the flaps, the front of the fuselage, the gun panels, and so forth. And then I would move back across to the 35177, borrow that one, uh, and a variation of the 35109. You can tell that that's a, a, quite a different color change uh, for the faded intermediate blue. So like the cowl, the front of the cowl, the rear fuselage, the aerolons, and some of the wing panels have this sort of value change. And finally, use the 35190 uh, for the most faded and bleached areas, like the fabric sections on the wings, the elevators, and the rudder. Now, for the birdcage, for this side of, of the paint mule, I'm using a blend of flat blue, uh, ocean grey, and white. Okay, I'll put some ratios up on the screen uh, to explain how I've got those, those different values. For the 35177, uh, I've used a combination of a, a 131 combo. For the 35190, it's a 153, so we're really dialing back the, the flat blue. And then I sometimes would add a little bit of the XF23, the light blue, because that desaturates it and gives a little bit of a green hue. Okay. And then for the 35450, uh, now we're, we're moving to almost to the white, the bleached. And then the 35488, um, oh, and then we're swapping, sorry, I'll say that again. We're swapping out the 82 and we're going straight to the light blue, okay, for those last two colors. I'll put them all up on the screen or on the thing below. Now for the tritone, for the 1A, I'm using these three Tamiya colors. We've got the XF17, the C blue, the XF8 flat blue, and XF2 flat white. For the 35045, it's a 532 mix. For the 042, I just do a straight uh, 17 and 8 together. The 35190, we replace the uh, the XF17 because we get rid of a lot of the C blue and we put in the 82. So that's the 882 and 2, a 153 mix. 
and then for the most bleached areas the the 35109 uh, I've now gone to I've gone back to the 17 and the 8 and the 2 and it's a 234 mix so you can see on the bird cage on the on the fabric ray sections here I've used the the, the lightest colors there the 3548 for the flaps and aerolons I've used the 450 okay for the well, for the aerolon actually and then for the uh, for the flaps and for most of this area here I've used 35190 uh, but I have mottled in you might be able to see that I have changed up some of the panels by just mixing in a few a few variants of this as well okay now when we come to the fuselage side as I explained before I've used the main base color the 35177 but as you can see along here and uh, up towards the cowl I've used a bit of the 35190 Okay, just to change it up, just to make it. I'll actually, I'll go further on the uh, uh, on the Tamiya one, and then on the tail, you can see I've used the lightest 488 for the rudder. In fact, I can go even more, and then the second lightest for the post, and then again for the fabric sections, we go the lightest, and then just some mottling and changing there on the 35450. If I flip this over on this side, I've put in a replacement Aralon there, so that's actually in sea blue colours. And there's the fabric again, and then we've got some mottling and some different colors. You can change these however you want. You can also add, I'll show you in a second with the other one, you can also add in some pre-shading because they did use touch-up lines on these fuel tanks. Okay, they sealed them and then they touched them up using sea blue. So here's the underside insignia, uh, sorry, light gold gray, whereas on the flaps I've used my corrector. So that's the actual recommended color. You can see how yellow and ivory that is. Whereas I've used my slightly cooler one here on the flap, so that's what I, one I would recommend across. So talking for the tritones, we've got a lot more going on here, and it does get quite complicated. I'll stick with the wing, and you can see I've used the 35190 on the fabric sections, and a little bit of mottling here on these leading edge sections, where I've used the 109, this one here, on these main panels, and a little bit of the 045. But it's actually a mix of those two. You have to change it up, because... The reference photos show, and it's hard to tell also because of the angle of the gull wing, where the actual value change uh, happens. So on some of the flaps, sometimes darker, sometimes these inner panels, sometimes darker, sometimes these machine gun access panels are lighter. So yeah, you can use a bit of a license there to do that. The uh, Aerolons, I think I use the 109, and I'll switch to the fuselage and you can see how we really start to get a lot going on here. So this is the fuel leak that's present on most of the uh, 1As. I will actually add some very light desert yellow to go in the middle there to get that proper stain. But that is basically just 190, 35190. I've used to spray that there over the sea blue and with different panels done in different values of the sea blue across there. And there's the intermediate blue, just the base color there. You don't get a lot of fading until you get back here. On the front cowl, however, I have changed, changed it up. So you've got different variations of the C, two sea blues there across and then we go to the rudder we've got the most starkest bleached out for the rudder post just like on the bird cage same with the um uh, with the elevator and back there i'll just flip this over and break it and you can see this what looks like the pre-shading i was talking about before that's the touch-ups so that's the sea blue the 042 the 045 one of these two doesn't really matter okay over the 35190 because they, they sealed up these wing leading edge tanks. And again, I've changed up the colors on the flaps and the aerolons. There's the insignia white, it's quite cold. Okay, I would recommend the, um, I haven't done the corrected one on this one, so I'd recommend knocking that back or of course doing it over a brown paint. So there we have it. I hope I haven't confused the hell out of you and you haven't, you, you know, you're scratching your head about all these bloody numbers you're putting up, Chris. But, you know, this is the way I've gone about this because I'm doing two effectively separate models. So there's two separate paint schemes to work out. And because the Corsairs have that unique, well, it's not that unique. A lot of other uh, aircraft of that time had extreme fading and weathering effects on them. I really wanted to do a deep dive and that's what I've done. Uh, I've hoped I've helped you there in choosing different colors in considering not using the recommendations uh, and to come out with a you know fairly stark or desaturated looking model. I mean, some of the bird cages were, uh, you know, in the normal blue, they, they were really, really faded to hell. Uh, but yeah, it's up to you what you want to do. This is what I want to do, and I've really enjoyed going through this, and this is something I like to do going forward on all my models, is to really knuckle down, plan out all the colors, get it right, so I'm not doing this on the fly. 
So in my next video, which will hopefully be the last one, I'm going to tackle the real things, both of them side by side. And I'm going to go through some more, I was going to include them in this video, we got far too long, uh, some, some weathering effects. So how to do the fuel stain leaks, the chipping, and in fact I have to do double, laying chip, double layer chippering with chipping <laughs> with the chromate uh, paint. And yeah, just a cavalcade of other weathering effects. And um, hopefully it'll come out in the wash as they say. So thanks again for watching. Uh, you know what to do, like, comment, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. See you next time.